Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last news of Europe. I'm your host, of course, Mr. Mocha Lover, but we got to talk about downsizing. Yet another day passed on the Legislative Council. The day same as yesterday, what, uh, and what everyone expected to be perfectly emulated in the days to come, the factions screamed at each other to little no avail. The chief executive will announce some new measures or another, which, if, if it wasn't lucky, might form some insignificant benefit or another. If not immediately backfire or get shouted down by the rest of the council every day, circling a little bit closer to the drain but never quite reaching it. When Komal once again took a stand, the delegates expected more of the same, perhaps. Some new proposal for the state investment in organ harvesting or illegally reclassifying the Chinese as livestock by this point. Soon in Chong Kong, delegates had stopped even attempting to stifle all grown. If Komal was in any way perturbed by this as he walked to the podium, he did not show it. On our delegates began, the ongoing crisis and the continued failures of the state to combat the economic downturn have been a continued disappointment to both myself and my colleagues at Hitachi. It is long past time to confront. An act upon truth about my fellow de delegates may find unpleasant as such. I must announce that Hitachi will be closing one-third of its Guangdong-based premises and relocating to more economically robust territories. This caused an uproar in the chamber over the shouting. One delegate's voice cut through, Are you insane? This country's already going t tits up and you want to kick us even further down? Come on, smirked. My first priority is to continue prosperity of Hitachi Limited first, and your country second. It's our rivals, it seems, have wedded themselves far too strongly to this land without contingency and a tragedy for you all, I am certain, but Hitachi's looking to have friends for their field. Thrown, of course, to the dogs, but we got some comments to go through as well. Um, such as, you know, the oil crisis may have passed, but the rise are now coming, so you gotta brace yourself. Uh, and brace ourselves we will, as we are lacking. But also, don't lean too much with Morita and Ibuka, since both of them will make Matsushita their puppet for their own agenda, which is something we don't want, of course. Luckily, we have a lot of the police here to help us out, and advancements in household technology, but finally, enough of this. The news had not gone over well. The assembled workers of the Hitachi owned steel planet that spent the first minute or so in shock denial. Then came anger, and the remaining stages of grief was not forthcoming. The sirens and loudspeakers from outside the barricaded doors perhaps helped to signal the path towards bargaining, although so far only threats have been made. Fang watched hostages blubber. As she and six other workers stared down upon them, brandishing work tools and saluted security with batons with weapons, looking at them, she felt a sense of disgust that bordered on nausea. She wondered if this was all they had felt looming over them, dominating them, giving out the crumbs that let them continue the fragments of their miserable lives, only to take it away when it suited them. Not pleasant, was it now? No more. The Japanese wouldn't take away their jobs or their dignity this time, not one more shred, not one step back. One of Fang's least favorite managers, now a hostage, asked through a quivering his lips in broken Cantonese, Why are you doing this? this we not do this. No choice. Fang delivered a swift kick into the man's groin. Do you want your teeth to stay the same shape? Then shut the screw up. She yelled over his, his pain shrieks. No choice, my butt, thought Fang. No choice but to cross over from Japan. No choice but to break their bodies on the altar of industry in their own careers. No choice but to do as they liked with Chinese women with no possibility of any repercussions. You may not have signed the papers, but you chose all of us, thought Fang. Time to reap what you sow. 206 days, not bad. And we'll close this one for now. And we have a little bit of corruption, but we're working on it. Cross the session, frankly. Come on, that's getting ridiculous, says Matsushita. How many hours? <clears throat> Oh, everyone's having revolts. Has it been now? If something happens to those hostages, it won't just affect <clears throat> uh, your bottom line. Our most dedicated police are going, or people are going to start packing their bags home, and then who will be left with? Uh, not to mention how Tokyo will react. If it's imperative that you begin negotiations, come on fast. I must concur, said Marita, who is clearly doing his best to maintain an even tone, even though he has through his look of utter contempt. I have no idea what you expect from your little downsizing project beyond making the Chinese desperate. I understand human dignity means little Hitachi, but concessions must be made and now before the spreads. I'll be honest as you book up. I don't care for the welfare of the imbecilic brutes like you call managers, nor for the common criminals in your employ, or formerly in your employ, but I'm forced to agree with the others here. You screwed up since you have failed to deal with it yourself and promptly we have no choice but to negotiate. Before the switches little like before the switches Tokyo, before anyone gets any funny ideas, understand? Come on, I spent the last several minutes of the private meeting in a silent scalp that had been growing steadily larger. As the creases in his forehead threatened to pierce us into a skull, he spoke. I would have expected such weakness from you of all people, Ibuka. Going soft in your old age, but enough of this. I was frankly insulted enough being dragged into this meeting. This disturbance is a Hitachi eternal affair, and it will be dealt with internally by Hitachi. I don't have the time or inclination to look after your agenda nor your careers. Good evening, gentlemen. He turned and left. The remaining CEOs looked around the room for a moment and said, Well, crap. Our GDP is 52 billion, almost. We had, we were actually pretty high, and then we actually got a little lower, which kind of sucks, but... Bated breath. Um, I think I read this one before, so if you want to read this one, man, prepare to follow. Please go ahead if you want to read about this one. I've actually read through several of these before, so I didn't realize that at the time. So we lose, we lose corruption, and then we lose uh, track control, which is great. So this is how it ends, which I've read this one before as well. Your death will not be in vain, so things are not going very well for everybody. Things are going, people are going to die. Cool. Well, maybe not cool, but, you know, whatever. Guangdong, looking pretty good. There goes parts of Iran. Ooh, that's not very high right now. They shall not pass. Um, I've read this before as well. Please go right ahead if you'd like to do this one too. You can't take all in all of us. Calling all cars. Oh, we can still build more. Look at that. Nice. Well, we're going to need, probably need some prisons and whatnot. 
Um, we'll go to that one. We're gonna need some hospitals after we kill off everybody, or you know, whatever. Schools. Yeah, that'll be pretty decent to get to. Some. Oh, we're gonna need a lot of prisons, honestly. Some army bases. We don't really need them. We'll take them. Over here, 31, 31. Uh, that's pretty. Not. That's not bad. This is very good. Calling all cards. If you remember that, please go ahead too. Uh, Hong Kong is not bad. Cho Shu is not great. And the control of Shokan is, well, okay, so. The Inferno. The simmering anger and desperation of the people once again is nearly impossible to put out. The Guangdong riots have begun. Oh boy. Riots break out. Ah. <coughs> so, a shattered illusion. At, the mo at this moment of time, one can be forgiven for thinking that Matsushita's actions have finally brought peace to Guangdong, but the truth could not be further from that. Its solution was only momentary now. Workers and laborers have taken to the streets in the wake of Hitachi's disastrous mishandlings of the factories in Koshu. Tens of thousands from the streets of Guangdong in protest of the recent events. The illusion of peace in Guangdong is shattered, perhaps for good. <coughs> so it's time to regroup and reorganize our forces to respond to this threat. <coughs> True, this is going to be a monumental task. The country has never seen protests on this scale before. It will take a lot of resources and commitment from the state to bring the masses back to heal, but we must push on for Guangdong in the prosperity sphere. Uh, picking up the pieces. For every day that we take no action, hundred hundred more laborers take to the streets of Guangdong in protest, further escalating the already grave situation. If left unchecked, their numbers will grow uncontrollably with enough time. Guangdong may be overrun by protesters, causing anarchy to descend upon the Three Pearls. We're going to allow these terrorists and ingrates to rule the streets for long. Something must be done to clamp down upon this movement. There's no time to waste, no seconds for us to spare. The riots will end, and the police will force the police force will make sure uh, they do. We have no choice but to stop uh, this before the situation worsens, of course. Not bad, not bad. Oh, and also we have this here, so you know what? Oh, it's not December. We're going to go and save anyways, just in case. Um, we're probably going to try to attack the uh, Fed Guangdong Federation of Tradesmen, because that one's a little easier to hit uh, than the other one, and we should probably get some better results from hitting them first, so we should be okay in general, but you know you never know. Uh, you kind of know, sometimes. We barely have enough grid power for everything, but whatever. We only have riots. All right. So is this money? So we want to increase radicalism, but decrease the strength as much as possible. Um, increase the strength and radicalism, which we don't want. Re increase Japanese frustration. Divert resources? No, we're good. Increase the government despair. We have control of the situation. Um, well, Japanese frustration is at one percent. We start hitting this too, but we don't really have to. You increase government despair. That makes it easier to pass stuff, so. Uh, this stuff increases government despair, decreases. It, uh, oh, yeah, we're good enough for that for now. Let's go do both. This will, will do what? Increases rider control and state and. Just increases everyone's frustration with us. So. The liver, quiet. The chief executive slammed his foot into the table. The room quickly, quickly hushed. Masashi had always been stressed, but for time to burst into anger like this was unheard of. Sushida, the police need to begin combing Koshu for protesters and apprehending them. The camp ought to always send you to assist your forces, he told police commissioner Sushida. But sir, I said do it. At this point, everyone in the room averted at Masashida's eyes. I could only watch as the chief executive ranted and raved over the protests. Tell how much I've done to get to where I am. How much I've sacrificed. I've had to claw and break my way through every decision I've ever made. And not once have I ever gotten the chance to reap the fruit of my labor. And now that I finally have what I want, those dudes try to oppose me and take it away. How dare they? Darn it, I need a drink. Tell me about it. Masashida stormed back into his office, took out a bottle of sake, and began drinking it slowly. He planned to finish it, even if it meant dealing with the protests drunk. But before he took another swig, he called Tsushida back to discuss the protests. I have another job for the police. Make sure that the Kampai Tai keep the violence at a rational level. You know how intense and barbaric they can get in the heat of the moment. Their loyalties to Japan, not to me, understand? The police chief nodded his head and quickly left his office. And with that, Masashida fulfilled his plan by the end of the day. The chief executive is at his wit's end. Kind of like me. Government control? Lure them out. Of course, uh, charging aimlessly without proper preparation into crowds of riders is the best foolhardy. Before we strike, then we must first make sure that we each and every strike hit and hurts. At this point, our police force is in disarray, in disarray and in panic due to the situation unfolding so rapidly and in the shape, we stand no chance against the riders on the streets. We must take decisive action, but not without watching our steps. We'll consolidate all of our strength into a coherent and organized force, planning and preparing the necessary steps to counter the people on the streets. When we are ready, we'll strike hard and fast. Hopefully, our efforts will pay off. 
know, as we load them out, although they are a large, unwieldy group, the riders still have something resembling an organization and make use of minimal but effective tactics. On seeing a force they think they cannot uh, fight, they retreat to areas of cities where the streets are narrow and the architecture obstruct our passage, and continue their destruction from there. Given the layout of the major cities within Guangdong, particularly Koshu itself, this means that they can avoid us easily. To effectively reduce their strength, we must first be able to fight them. The riot can, uh, control forces will we, we'll make use of methods, can lure them out in the areas where they can be more easily combated, and a matter of time they'll have nowhere to run but to enter our embrace. Ooh, I do not want to increase Japanese frustration, but uh, what is this one? Redirect the police. So decrease strength, increase the government control. Ah, oh, that's true. We do want that one too. And decrease strength, increase radicalism. Because I forgot we have this one down here too. Ah, that's not bad. Government control. This is this is a lot better than when we had Morito Kale here. Um, ninety percent, eighty-eight, almost ninety percent, ninety-nine percent. So click on estate. In the belly of a terrible machine. Speech had lost its value. Whistles, screeches, and blares from loudspeakers speakers had completely replaced Japanese and Cantonese as the languages of Guangdong. It was a sharp blow of a whistle that ordered a line of police officers in front of a shield wall, hoisting their tear gas grenade launchers and firing into the crowd before them. Screams were the only reply, dreadful and articulate, woeful hatred. The whistle blew again, of course. Sergeant Chao Song had been waiting for the signal. With a cry, he charged forward, following closely by a phalanx of policemen in full riot gear. None were men who minded getting their hands dirty. Some, like the sergeant himself, greatly enjoyed this particular duty as Chao crashed into one protester, sending the skinny man tumbling into the ground. With a casual swing, his baton crunched into the man's face, scattering blood and teeth across the street. He turned on his heel and swung again, charitably opting to strike a female protester in the belly and avoiding any permanent damage. She felt like a puppet whose strings had been cut, and the sergeant felt a fresh thrill of pure power behind Sergeant Chow. His men were either laying into the protesters or handcuffing those who had been subdued. One by one, the protesters were dragged away into the wa waiting police vans, mainly already brimming with beaten men and women, waiting to be taken to prison. While pain and sadness glittered in dozens of captured eyes, hatred remained in the events, and no sense of defeat seemed present. After about 20 minutes of more work, the protest march had been shattered, its leaders scurrying away, the police had cut a fresh hall of troublemakers, and the cells of Guangdong would soon be overflowing. It's, it's possible to imprison a man, but never the desire for freedom. So over here... We have very good control of the government. Very good control, very good control, very extreme control of the government. That's awesome. So, we're gonna, where are we at? 80? 20? Oh, that's really bad for us. So, we're gonna start here, maybe. Shokan. And we just gotta do all these. We're gonna decrease our support a little bit. Decrease our support. We're gonna do whatever it takes. So, that's gonna start working a little better for us. The government is still dominant across Guangdong for now. But if we can keep improving that, that'd be great. Now uh, we're going to keep working on just these guys. Oh, what else is that? Gather our strength and lure them out. Oh, Pallavi's won. Good job, Pallavi. Strike when the iron is hot. There's no time for us to be patient and slowly chip away the rider's strength without achieving anything. Where it previously showed her strength in combating the riders. This time it will not. The best method of this, to end this crisis is to strike at once. But strike as hard as we can. This action will ensure a rapid return to normalcy on the streets and the return of order to the country. Everything we have, man, every armored vehicle, and every equipment we have in a stockpile will be unleashed in one devastating blow to the riders. They'll fall on Guangdong and will return to the norm. And they'll go back to the factories whether they like it or not. One lethal strike to destroy the tumors known as CCL and the GFT. Cool. Break the budget freeze. Despite our earlier promises to the business elite of Guangdong, the situation has developed in such an extraordinary manner that the budget freeze is rapidly becoming a no longer tenable position. It may be soon for us to bite the bullet and you not untie the hands of the wavering police from its back before it's too late. Versus the inhibiting effects of the budget freeze order. Security exemption, so we should be okay. How oh, frustrated is Japan? Things are furious, concerns are rising. Oh well, getting organized. Looking around the basement, Ahida Gam Rong could not help but wince. Many of his compatriots were sporting nasty looking bruises or other signs of having been battered. The police batons. Oh my god. If you're like to read about uh, advancements in some technology, please go right ahead. <coughs> Why, uh, the riots are widespread, pretty normal. Uh, um, the police batons and trenches exacted a toll of bruises, blood, and pain from his people. What had been broken, however, was the group's spirit. Even in the darkness of the basement, Gam could still see the shining light of defiance still burning in the protesters' eyes. We have three missing, Gam said, having conducted his head count. I doubt we'll be seeing them for any time while the police have them under lock and key, but the circle goes on. It was hard to see the firm nods of agreement by the others in attendance. None wanted to admit defeat. It began passing out assignments for the next day of protest. It was no longer enough to simply have warm bodies in the streets. As the police had escalated, so had the protesters. Now each member of the protest movement had, take, had a task to fulfill when the morning came. The largest, strongest members of the group would serve as frontline enforcers, maintaining the cohesion of the protesters and hindering the abuses of the police. Others would serve as supply runners, bringing water, medicine, uh, food, and the megaphones wherever they were needed. Finally, a few would serve as medics, binding up the wounds of the comrades and doing their best to ameliorate the police's brutality. 
The rose was distributed. The girl, the group, bade one another farewell, exiting the basement and disappeared in the e evening light. Guangdong Swally continues. Will the pearls darken further? Minimal. That's good. A brother scorn. The two officer land. The atmosphere now felt uncomfortably familiar. Ali reminiscent of the chaos which interrupted from the aftermath of Yusuf's collapse. Crowds of people smothered the streets. Abuse irregularly hurled from them. You never mind. After all, they had a point. The whole thing felt far too unsettling to think of so much time had passed, and the only thing that had changed was how angry the people were. Suddenly, the mob player charging for land, but he didn't flinch, of course. <laughs> uh, the formation around tightened and absorbed the shock of the wave as soon as they turned to descend upon the people. Officer Lamb grabbed the first man to enter his grasp, whoever he was squirmed intensely, but Lamb's experience gave him the upper hand as he quickly subdued the rider and hauled him back. But something happened. There was a huge pull against his own, and worst of all, heart stopped be sounding. Heart so stopped sounding, yeah. It was a scream, hey, hey, you came, hey, hey, it didn't stop. It was clear to Lamb that the two were close, likely brothers. He could barely take the strain on his heart by now. He strangled any fleeting sympathy and clung on, waiting for his fellow officers to come to his aid. But before the brother could be caught, the brother had swallowed him back. He could still hear the cries as the man was held back, and he hurled hay into the back of a van as he lay tossing and turning the whole night. The next day, Lamb returned to his duties. Happens, man. All of my losses were lessons. The longer he, he lacked success, the more desperate Yamauchi got. The more wild his imagination ran. He needed to be bolder. That was what he thought when he really learned from his last failure. Everyone would like, like vacuum cleaners, but what, did they need it? Uh, they want it, but whatever. Transportation. Everyone needs to get around the city. Taxis, that was it. The glorious revelations that burst in his brain like fireworks saw Yamauchi running back to his desk, making call after call to suppliers, experts, and friends. He could trust not to run away with his million yen idea, and after weeks of frantic planning, amidst a backdrop of growing tensions he barely noticed, Yamauchi finally had something to implement. He needed one to make one last call to the lucky supplier and inform them that he would send a purchase over order the following day. By the end of the next week, he would have a fleet of 20 cars painted friendly yellow, and tomorrow he would start interviewing drivers. Nintendo would boldly enter the taxi business, servicing neighborhoods who often forgotten by other providers. It would work, it would have to work or else. He much heard shattering glass to his side. He snapped up uh, from the pile of papers that would not hold up his future. It wasn't his window, thankfully, but he suddenly became aware of a loud commotion. Peering through the window, he saw a small group of protesters against the police barricade. Changing out slogans, Bully began to fight with the cops. At first, he thought it was a meaningless distraction as he slammed the window before returning to his desk. But as he looked upon his plan, he realized the niche in his taxis needed. A safe journey from start to finish. Note to self, ask drivers if they have military law enforcement experience. All the promises. There are few things more frightening than facing parents that you had failed. It was one thing for him to risk himself in the movement, no matter how much he believed it, but it was another to involve his brother. Returning home to tell his parents that their son was arrested because of insistence that he joined was difficult. Joan didn't think he'd ever see his parents' soldiers drop before, because then they'd at least had each other. Now one of them was gone, if only for a time. Mother almost collapsed to the ground and said, sinking into the ch kitchen chair. She said nothing but she began crying as long, pulled her into a tight embrace. His, his father's face was still, his eyes distant. He didn't likely know what had happened from the moment Chun walked into the house alone. The fear of the grip that small home was oppressive, familiar and heavier than it ever had been before. The fear that they weren't going to see Hay again, that the sun was lost to the depths of the state forever. He didn't know what else to say, he simply joined his parents in an embrace, and his mother cried into her husband's shoulder. Promise me, his father said in a halting voice, unusual emotion clouding it. Promise me you won't leave, stay here until it ends, it's too dangerous now. Shouldn't wish he could answer honestly, he wished he could promise without reservation that he would not risk them losing a second son. Yet he could not rest and just let the state that had taken his brother be left untouched. He, they wanted him to do that, they wanted them this to break him. Instead, he had only solidified his resolve. I would see the tyrannical state torn apart no matter what it took. He would see it. I promise. And lie. Right, report. My officers have been failing to bring an end to this riot, Chief Executive Matsushita. Matsushita. Not only that, from what people have told me, monsters have completely failed to address any of the issues that were needed to prevent the riot. I'm sorry I'm not able to help you. The chief executive wiped his forehead. The office was hot, cramped, sweaty. He was so clung to him like a vice. Keep going. Most of the resources in each station have also been depleted, and some of the news has come to light. The mobs, they, uh, they captured some of our armaments. My apologies again, chief executive. There's nothing for it, commissioner. Uh, he wiped his, at his forehead. The blame is not on you, but it appears that we have a new pursuit to pursue a new strategy. Go out there and talk to your own men, commissioner. Tell them they will not rest until the mobs have been crushed. Desperate towns. So Monster Shooter returned once more to the room of his emergency council, the only place in the whole of Guangdong where the cacophony of riots uh, cannot be heard, sealed away behind the safety to reinforce doors and layers upon layers of bodyguards. The chief executive was anxious to reassure himself in the face of the failure that the police had faced. Yet that was much easier said than done, something he had not fully come to grips with. Once he arrived, he let the chief of the police explain him first. Despite the scale of damage caused by the rioters, the police force remains relatively strong by comparison, sir. Tsushida Kuniyasu uh, calmly stated, we can protect the majority of the corporation's assets, especially with the help of each other or each of the security teams, for a while longer. On the face of it, the news seemed uh, 
and reassuring to many, but the chief executive was not satisfied. What Masashida knew was the longer the people were out on the streets and not in the factories, the harder his opponents inside the legislative council would move against his aims. Hesitancy was something they should not accept and something he could not to uh, tolerate. That's not what I came to hear, not in the slightest. We cannot simply sit by and wait for them to burn out on their own. No one can tell how much damage or blaze would have wrought by them. Action need to be taken again now. The room was willingly silent once, again, once he stopped. But bar a low muttering between Ibuka and his associate with no support incoming, Masushita quieted himself down. From the point onwards, the other members of the council took control, split between those who favored continued containment of the riders and those who wanted an approach focusing on combating radicalization. They begged to an argument, and soon enough, all spilled over into thinly veiled abuse, even as Masushita waited for an all to end. An ambition on edge in a country on the brink of disaster. Must revise or plan to do the Guangdong riots. Hmm. A change of course. We seem to have miscalculated our moves in. We have nothing uh, done but to make the situation worse. Our supposed strategy is striking while the iron is hot has failed, and the heavy crackdown is only strengthening the resolve of the workers. And in turn, radicalize their motives. This is bad, really bad. So up now in the air, especially up to Matsushita, to show us the way forward. A new tactic towards the situation will have to be adopted. And at the moment, we have two options to choose from. The first option is to continue down what we were doing and grind the riders down to submission with our superior strength. The alternative is to attempt to open talks with the riders or to reconcile cease and cease hostility. Our trust will determine how the situation will unfold. Only fools will insist blindly on staying on a mistaken course, but fewer still are those who know the correct path. The demands of the people. After a while, it became impossible to ignore, no matter how hard one tried. Every street in Hong Kong uh, in, uh, had a post on it. They were on the front buildings, gates, telephone poles, cars, anything and everything that could possibly be covered by them. They were a white allergy that coated the entire city in four word slogans. You can't close your eyes to avoid it either. The same slogans on the posters were shouted at full volume in the innumerable protests and marches that were right on seemingly every hour. If you weren't all buildings, like Masashida Masaharu was, the whole noise was very much still audible. Then there was the violence. Every single day, the chief executive lure received lurid reports of detail in the clash between the police and the protesters. <coughs> it didn't take long uh, before they realized that the riots were taking a serious toll in Guangdong. Their objective was to make their demands clear if they had done their job. Some time had passed since the riots began, clear enough to consider carefully whether it was worth responding to them or not. It was certainly worth at least thinking about. The chief executive thought, since more than enough blood has already been shed, of course. The riots were disabled in Guangdong by the second, and if talking to the protesters could help bring an end to all this, then why, well, why not? On the other hand, negotiating and failing would be even worse. A broken promise would be even worse than making no promise at all, and there was no telling how the luck would worse still. Japan uh, would react if word got out that they were talking to the radicals. Matsushita Masaharu gave some more thought. Uh, a difficult decision looms. All looms, or just looms? Well, you know what, we're going to save, because I remember doing this at Sony, uh, you know, Morita Kale. And it didn't go great for us a couple times, trying to negotiate. But if we can calm them down, that'd be great. Cutting a deal? Well, then it's the riots. That thought had entered Master Shida Master Hara's mind once more a few times, as well as the entire government scrambled to deal with the worst crisis in Guangdong's history. It was initially a volume, just above a whisper, but it grew ever louder as it became increasingly clear that the riots would not magically, of course, disappear. That was remarkably tempting. <coughs> they would have to make some concessions to the protesters, of course, which would prove troublesome, but hopefully they would be only minor ones, and then all of the chaos would be over and business could return to normal. Despite the very late hour, many of the government's highest officials were huddled in the office to discuss the matter. They put on brave faces, though from their slashed shoulders and slightly dipped heads, one could tell they were all exhausted. The chief executive addressed one of them. Go over it again, Igarashi, one more time. Igarashi Masoto, the government's designed negotiator. Designated negotiator to straighten his tie and clear his throat. Oh, yeah, of course. Once we begin negotiations, the protesters would expect that we come to some sort of agreement with them. It's absolutely critical that we get this right the first time. We'll probably not get a second chance. Ultimately, the decision's up to you, Chief Executive. Should we begin negotiations? Not right now. Yeah, of course. So I've done this before. We can build a proposal. We can apologize. We can have individual accountability. We can have a restitution. We can retrain and have social welfare. Concerns are rising. A state ombudsman. We have an independent ombudsman. So, uh, we have affirmative action, right to unionize, and protected status, and of course, a privileged advocate. So, and with this one, 10 possible provisions, one more recommend. So, you can choose this one, you basically choose them all. What do we you do? We're training in social ombudsman. Well, Branch, if you want to buy this, please go ahead. We need some more time to review your proposal, but we'll get in touch soon. They're still pretty strong, so we'll see if this actually does anything. So, out of harm's way, the key to continue the riots is to establish a fire break and keep the wider public from joining the conflagration. Or, no room to breathe. A fire left unchecked only spreads and must be smothered before it grows any larger. Give them an inch. The lowest thing in fruit to diffuse its crisis is to take one step towards the dissonance, even if it empowers our critics. Interesting. Who's going to despair? If you lag, then we'll take them a mile. We'll take a mile. Of course, we'll tell investors that anyone who subjects can see how much they enjoy a jail cell instead. 
turn down the rhetoric. It's the abilities of the order of the day, not punishment, and not even retribution. That's sort of presence. But whatever its purpose, the police presence shall be increased. Nice. Break the deadlock. To divide the platicated masses from the rabid few, surely this can be accomplished? Or no room to breathe? Eyes on every wall. <coughs> Increase radicals and decrease strength. Ears on every corner. And know exactly what the protesters are up to. Issue urgent police funding. Security force will be given a blank check to do what they must, provided, of course, we haven't promised to look up that the budget will be frozen. Increases our own seats. Keep Tokyo in mind. Of course, of course we'll keep Tokyo informed of our budget decreases. If only so they have an narrative that isn't breathless that hardlines about chaos and misery. Of course, that we are telling the truth, they are going to assume. We get no further effects. Emergency powers ordinance. In, uh, in, deliver, in order to, del to deliver the coup de gras. Coup de gras. New powers are needed ones that can help t stop this from ever happening again. We could do that one. But <clears throat> I'm going to go to out of harm's way. <coughs> We've chosen to approach the riders with a reconciliation. Or reconciling manner. And we must waste no time on getting to work. To bring back order on the streets. Our focus is to radicalize the troublemakers on the streets to the point where they may be drastically easier to handle control. At least until a permanent peaceful solution, peaceful solution can be, to the crisis can be found. Sometimes we have to know to concede to some of their demands. And we will surely calm the riders down. But we must practice caution as the integrity of the state cannot be compromised by only to pass by some rash workers causing trouble in the streets. We may get concessions, but not too much, of course. Case. Nope. We're working on it. <coughs> Give him an inch, huh? I don't really. Taken from Fujitsu and Hitachi. Oh, okay. Not bad. And of course, with a method of handling the situation, we will once again use appeasement to calm the workers down and prevent them from causing a possible escalation in the severity of the situation. The workers descend to the streets, definitely without reasoning. Everyone has their own reasons to protest and riot, and it does not take a genius analyst to understand why the rioters want. They have descended their campaign and protest to demand such things as better wages, improvement among working conditions, and reasonable work hours, among any, many other things, to bring back order on the streets. Perhaps it's time for us to review our current policies, and perhaps give the laborers the rights and conditions, along with enforcing them effectively to appease the rioters. So you're about this, please go ahead. What were the Chinese up to? The government has the option to investigate the Chinese Consul General's role in the Guangdong riots via the riots and decision category. Of course, an investigation is something that's explosive and may have severe consequences if mishandled. But turn down the rhetoric. Uh, other corporate leaders uh, make up the Cantonese. That make up the Cantonese government have very rapidly denounced the recent events with rather strong connections, uh, connotations in the word. There's no other option for Matsushita but to toe the middle line very, very carefully. Dissimilarly to the other corporate leaders, Chief Executive Matsushita will make a statement to criticize the police force's actions and handling of the riots, while at the same time not completely denouncing the police, thus maintaining his full support of the law enforcement. On top of this, Matsushita will also promise cooperation with the populace of the workers that restrain, restrain themselves. In these times, the tongue truly is sharper than the sword. Start something new. Um, I think I've read this one before. Your proposal will not be sent to the Lidco, where you have to pass before it comes into the force. Yeah, if you want to read this one, please go ahead. So basically, we, we get a thing where we might be able to actually negotiate for it. Corruption, no more. We barely have that. The most important week. I've read this before too. If you want to read this again, please go ahead. Forty-seven votes. Agreement with the GFT and any good roll. Oh man, that's not good. So we compact. Do the compact with the GFT. It will give us the following effects. Uh, Zujin will love us more. Zu ex Japanese experts will hate us. Japan will really not like us, but China will like us. We'll spend a lot of money. Probably we will slowly improve. We get more highly education, highly increases education, unemployment, pension policy effectiveness, as well as industrial regulations. Um, GFT compact. The apology. Restitution of the GFT will be added to us. So how do we get more votes? Maybe this one before. Um, I think I read this one before. So, well, I can read it anyways. The Ersatz Panoply of War. Oh, look at that. <coughs> 
It was a quiet night of the barracks, a short ways outside of the heart of urban chaos, something considered a minor tragedy to those inside. The horizon was not exactly clear. Nothing good was coming towards Private Horono's guard post. Not a sound, not a single darn soul coming to receive punishment. His hands, desperately seeking a solution to their discomfort, wandered over his rifle, fingers brushing against his intricately crafted machine of death. Final and the guard around the trigger, but unable to pull it. The order did not come. His hands were not at the end of a flood of bullets. His boots were not nestled deep in the shattered skulls. There was only the sound of disturbed leaves outside and the scratching within. Lights had already come, so Kuta so, uh, continued scraping away with his flashlight. The rest of the barracks did not complain, themselves busy in similar projects. It had taken to avoiding wearing his eye patches of light, so the pale mechanical glow cast on the reddish black pit, where visions lurked no more. Only an infernal never had any itch. He ignored it to focus on his task, supposedly. These rounds are now stable out of prototyping. Good! His knife flashed on and off in the limited night carving names of previous hacks which the chief executive had sent them to shoot their barely functioning toy guns. Of the true names of the disgusting masses, the chief executive had failed to pass by while they were sent away. All five companies over whose decadence the chief executive resided. And of course, they were all for the, Chinese ex uh, the chief executive instead, just in case he missed. Concluding another uneventful staff meeting, Nagano shook the last man's hand and sat back at his desk. The unsigned order lingered on in front of him, as it always did, soon, soon, but not yet. As he considered packing up and leaving for the day, he noticed the continued ghostly sensation of the last man's hand in his, a berating itch, but one which could not be scratched yet. The Airsus Panopoly of War. Here they come again! What are they wearing? One of the police officers' uh, voices echoed across the street as you, the ragged uh, <clears throat> police line steadied itself for the oncoming tide. <coughs> Rocks thrown by agitators had knocked a few holes in the line as cops staggered away with bleeding heads and fresh concussions. Now the push seemed to be happening in earnest. Many of the protesters were now equipped with padding and crude helmets, as some even carried bamboo sticks, now appearing like a ragtag mirror of the, of the police opposition. Around every neck, a wet towel hung, ready to be brought up to protect against the now ubiquitous tear guess that was wrecked havoc on the early marches. Understands the discipline had come over the group. They marched in unison, holding a formation that challenged the police's buckling ranks. Further down the road, behind the oncoming column of protesters, tires had been set alight and left in the middle of the street. Flames looked greedily over the rubber, sending stinking black smoke into the air. Similar columns of inky smoke rose from their other streets, filling the air with an acrid stench that combined with the shouts, screams, and sirens to produce a truly oppressive atmosphere. Guangdong and the three pearls rolled in, rolled in violence, tearing themselves apart. Citizens, workers, and the desperate clash on the streets with a rank after rank of policemen all around the city. The cacophony of the protests roar, drowning out, drowning out all else. The pressure mounts, and the screams rise higher, clinging onwards. First day had been bad, the following days had been worse. He just tried to keep to himself and make himself as small and scarce as possible. That had quickly proven difficult. Every day since his arrest, more and more men were being thrown into the prisons and the cells were quickly becoming cramped. No one cared about him, which was a good and bad thing. It was good because no one bothered him. The prisoners already inside had ignored him. The guards were occupied by unruly prisoners. No one harassed him, but no one else was his, fr was his friend either. He quickly learned that everything was scarce in prison. And it was worse as more people were incarcerated. He barely got enough food each day, but it resolved that no matter what, he was going to press forward. This place would not claim him. Today is going to take a risk. There was another man who seemed around his age and unlikely to be a hardened criminal. He had likely been part of, a of the protest. He took a deep breath and approached the man who had raised an eyebrow at his approach. Protest? The man asked. Protest. I confirm I'm part of the first wave here. Guess as much man now. I came a few days after you then. Name is Peng. What's yours? My name is Lee Hay, he answered, extending a hand. It was a small thing, but he hoped that he finally found someone in the prison who could, he could trust. And I'm not going to die here. Friends in the darkest places. For when you're desperate. Almost involuntarily, Masa shooting Masa Haru with his eyes again. Realizing that after that he'd done it for the second time in three minutes, how many weeks has it been since he had uh, last had a proper night's rest? He glanced at the clock table. Or table clock. It was 4 a.m., the dead of night, and the entire city of Koshi was fast asleep. In truth, he hadn't noticed it was this late. For the noise, he could tell that the negotiations and informal vote counting were just as frenzied when they began in the morning. But the days were fluttered by quickly, too quickly, and soon it would be a time to vote on the proposal. Despite the government's best efforts, there were so many recalcitrants in the Lutko. The vote could well come down to the wire, and an age-old idea came to the front of the chief executive's mind. To be precise, <clears throat> there were two potential solutions to this problem. They could always, there was always an option to twist people's arms. The government could, with more of a bit of pressure, strong on the bill's opponents into voting for it instead. Others could begin to split the tea money, provided the government was willing to provide enough of it. Given the stakes, however, the cost for taking either option would be nothing short of ex extortionate. Not to mention that this would essentially supercharge corruption in Guangdong. Masa Shida Masaharu. Part of the options in front of him, yeah, so it would absorb it in, but the government just need to have bite the bull and take it. Uh, we need three votes, and this one, uh, we have what we need, whatever it takes. 60 political power, which is basically the same amount that we spent. Actually, we spent a little bit more than that. We get 10% corruption. Buy five more seeds. I'd rather do these three. Well, out of the place would be nice. Um, we don't have quite enough yet, but within a few days we should have enough to vote, even though we do get more corruption, unfortunately. Uh, we ultimately really should have it, though. That's why political power to have is so important. There you go. We got it. Going on the Reddick, modern stage. 
Behind the storefront window of an electronic shop in Hong Kong, televised uh, television flickered another channel. Normal such an occurrence would be ignored, but what appeared on the screen was of much greater interest than the usual fare. Chief Executive uh, Matsushita Masaharu himself prepared to give a speech. I, Matsushita Masaharu, am here to deliver my sympathies to the people of Guangdong. Times are hard. It's undeniable. I do not ask you to endure this forever, only for now. A brighter future awaits us all, so as long as the Legislative Council continues to oversee our path forward, and so long as people have faith in their employers, so to do right by them. A crowd of people would now gather in front of the store, plainly shocked by Matsushita's words. Some wondered aloud if he was being forced to do something like this, when no other near apologetic statement had ever been released by the chief executive before. I'd also like to thank his loyal police for making it possible for the good of law abiding people to continue to live their lives even in this terrible, chaotic time, Matsushita continued. The eyes of a few of the gathered crowd narrowed at that. They'll punish the anarchists and radical terrorists who are responsible for making your lives more difficult. I ask you to continue cooperating with the police to the full extent, so they may crush these troublemakers and move on to a brighter future ahead. As Masashita's announcement finished, most of the crowd dispersed, many wondering about how his promises meant nothing, some, however, were more hesitant. If Masashita himself had been pushed to say please and thank you to the average people, then maybe the position of the Legislative Council was indeed beginning to soften. If not in policy, then in spirit, a sort of presence. So the situation is running very fragile, and the riders are running amok as acting as if they own the streets. After what we've done and policies that we've changed, they are still just troublemakers on the streets. With the recent actions that are seen as giving to the protesters, this may give the wrong impression towards the populace that the government is weak and easily swayed. We don't want these kind of sentiments in the air. The riders must not forget that they do not own the streets, and they must also remember who is truly in control of Guangdong. We'll establish a large police presence not to attack them up front, but to show that we are still here, reminding the riders of our presence on the streets. Oh boy. The council approves. A small man, some ex uh, executive for the Matsushita Masaru's company who had been granted the right to tally, walked up to the podium in the center of the council floor. He stood at the podium, watching the crowd of executives and waiting for them to become quiet. Finally, gave a short st statement to the microphone. The vote passes. Negotiations with the dissidents can now be put into effect. <clears throat> the conversation crashed to a halt across the room as each man considered the weight of the moment. For those who had pushed forth this agreement, there could be celebration later. For those who had fought back, seething and fuming. For the, yet for the moment, the room could be united in shock. <coughs> as the moment set in, the initial shock gave way. Uh, to quiet concern as jittery con contemplation of what might come next. The, the news thus far had only gone so far as this room. Soon it would be, make its way through Guangdong and beyond. Beholden to the judgment of every executive, officer, general, worker, and most importantly, every protester who pledged themselves to the other protester group. The world would soon react to the news, and the world is rarely kind of Guangdong. A shot in the dark is still shot, and actually, we lose two Hitachi seats, which is actually okay with us, so. Nice. And of course, I heard this earlier, so give him an inch, and then. And we'll take a mile. It's common sense that we have to do something to gain out of our rather disprofiting dispro change of policy, particularly in the status of workers' rights and such. There's no telling that the riders would simply stop causing trouble immediately after a recent change of policy. Thus, we've come up with a new and admittedly mildly risky strategy to make sure that the riots stop. And there's no telling, though, of course, of what the riders' response to this would be. A request will be issued to the workers on the streets, asking the riders to restrain their actions and limit themselves from carrying out further acts of violence on the streets. We'll also make some subtle but noticeable threats of what might happen if they do not comply with the very polite requests. Those who leave. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. I forgot about the police stuff here, which we're actually doing okay with, even though, well, we don't have a lot of political power right now. For those in the streets, news of the successful negotiations brought a weight off their shoulders. In the marches across Guangdong, they shouted successes from their bullhorns, broke from the picket lines, and took down their sides and went home. They walked away from the terrors of crackdowns and investigations and returned with a victory. Not all else accepted so easily. For many, the terms felt too light, too minor, too easily sidestepped to truly protect the Chinese workers, but for many, they trusted their leaders. Their negotiators, they believed in what the Congress had built, or at least what it was the best that could be given because of the circumstances. No, the ranks of the dissidents did not swell with joy, far from it. Even the happiest members so carried a faint concern in their heart that they might have done a bit more. But they returned to their families to good friends. To the lives suspended by the terrors of the riots, they returned alive and safe, and with the hope that their next day of work might be a little less dangerous. And I believe that Guangdong might have grown a fair hair. Because we know the GFT, the CCL's strength and radicalism have increased. Well, their ticks have increased, so. Hey. We could negotiate. Um, we're going to wait. Let's, let's try to destroy it a little bit more before we do, do anything else. Redirect the peace lease to the CCL. Yeah, that sounds good to us. Meet with them, decrease the CCL strength. Decrease government control, decrease transport. Uh, that's seems pretty good too. Decrease strength, decrease radicalism. Uh, that's what I think that's too. Divert our resources away. No, not quite. Still, 50 political power is not bad. We can still get rid of corruption, 8%. Hmm. Because why not? Screw it, why not? We're looking okay. Even though our economy's probably crap in the bed, yeah. It is what it is. Hey, those who remain, economic review, and you want to read this, please go ahead. But 
Uh, for the remaining protests, there's no joy upon the news of the successful negotiations. In the marches across Guangdong, they watched as their former allies had success from the bullhorns, broke from the picket lines, took down the signs, and of course, went home. And they left their allies on the cold to follow in their path or perish. Those who remained on the streets did not falter, though. They were not excited by the new newfound agreement. They were horrified in their eyes. The protesters had given up on mere trinkets and offices. A question was left on the tongues of every protester. Had their allies always aimed to force themselves into the machines of Guangdong, or had they grown so demented that it seemed there was no other way? On their encampments, on the streets of Koshu, and their homes on the outskirts of the state, the protesters cursed old friends and laid salt to their path. They were not errors their allies had. There would be no second negotiations until the world itself was overturned. Guangdong would not be tamed twice over, of course. 2% off. Sinners are furious. But, you know, whatever. Let's give him an inch. And... So we do have 56 seats, which is pretty good. We're not negotiating yet. Absolutely not. We're going to keep beating them down as hard as we can. Because there's no point to. And eventually you'll break the uh, deadlock. A new situation has developed within the doors of the Legislative Council. And it's now apparent. That our appeasement towards the writers may cause some worry within the Legislative Council of the possibility of his government losing control. This has resulted in a deadlock between these two responsibilities, keeping the writers appeased and happy, as well as the calming of the members of the Legislative Council from fear of our weakening, or, of our weakening influence. Mazo Shido has now at a crossroads, one that can, he simply cannot back down from. His choice is simple, yet daunting. Either way, he'll force a compromise with the writers, so as to the dismay of the Legislative Council, or continue on the precarious position of balancing corporate and popular interests. One wrong move, and the whole system might come tumbling down. One could be forgiven if they describe the past deliberations of the Legislative Council as disordered, perhaps even archaic or anarchic. They could also be forgiven for mistaking it, as its previous words, as a boxing ring instead of an arena of debate. Even the worst of these previous assessments would be to pale in comparison to the current reality of the scenes within the Legislative Council. In the past, it had been a boxing match. The present was a gruesome display of a medieval, medieval melee. Ebenezer were previously left stealthily in back, so now they were willing to open them with menace. The representatives that once made every precaution to appear well and groomed now descended happily into the bloodbath that arose around him. Also, she did all he could to rise to this challenge. He insisted he alone could restore the stability the Guangdong had only recently lost. He alone could bring the state to its rightful place. All the council had to do was listen. Yet he found very few sympathetic ears outside of his allies. They accused him of a power grab, of doing nothing to save the economy, and even worse, capitulating to the rioters. And if the riots were to gain fall of power in Guangdong, then the whole project would be staring down the barrel of a gun. The legislative council backs itself further into a corner. We're getting quite a bit closer too. Visible hand of the market. With a long practice stroke, Smasa Shida signed his name on the proposal act or proposal and said it's pet down. A consumer goods control amendment should it pass would present a noble shift from his usual stances. An able government to begin the stockpiling of central goods and distributing them in the event of a crisis to alleviate suffering among Guangdong's population. <clears throat> the most radical. Uh uh, position was buried halfway through in a short set of paragraphs stating that the chief executive's right to enable the price controls on food, water, fuel, and the sort of daily necessities that could have prices explode on tenable heights in the times of hardship. Much as he chafed under the Suzuki's inept skepticism, or statism, there was a kernel of truth buried beneath it. If Guangdong was to keep running, it couldn't afford to see its entire workforce base starve to death. And since rising, raising wages was out of the question, the only solution was to lower prices to acceptable levels. There should be pushed back, some of it from his own supporters, to sustain expansion of the government, but they would be made to understand. Compromise was the core of any businessman's success after all, and Matsushita had plenty in here to compromise on. Keeping the other companies on board was more important. The government should provide so that people might continue to work. Uh, so right now, what do we have here? 57 some, uh, due to the effects of our amendments, passing the uh, ordinance with these amendments will reduce or a chaos sway on Masashida Masaharu's decision making. Grants the government a key role in distributing key consumer goods in the event of a shortage, providing just essentials the Chinese don't need to eat well so as long as they ate. Granting the government a minor role in distributing key consumer goods in the event of shortages. Passing this effective ordinance, oversight ordinance, uh, with these amendments will reduce my chaos sway. We're going to go with that one. So 54, so. Close curtains. Um, as summary, though, the right to privacy within the confines of the personal or family of domiciles is inviolable by any other private citizen or organization. <coughs> so, rather the concluding line of the Pri Privacy Act, a, a recent addendum to the ordinance for effective oversight, though through the usual mix of mind numbing bureaucratic language of the government and the mees, mealy mouthed corporate doublespeak, it laid out the newly enshrined rights of the citizens of Guangdong against the corporate surveillance and stalking. Matsushita smiled as he read it. The pushback from Fujitsu with the constant inching towards spyware was to be expected, but Sony and Chung Kong's votes could take a little effort to secure to balance that out. That left Matsushita as a kingmaker for the bell, just the way he liked it. Its passing would be a double boom for Matsushita. Not only would it appease the Chinese populace by giving them a small taste of liberty, the exceptions written into the bill for the government surveillance and national security needs meant that in practice Matsushita alone would have the right to monitor, cutting all out the competitors. Cutting out all competitors. 
Given the Bells some teeth for failing to adhere with a risky plan, he knew that even smaller companies would grow restless with the introduction of any form of consequence. It wasn't necessary to secure the monopoly. But trouble with those companies was the last thing he needed. And there's one thing he knew, it was monopolies. Codifies an individual's right to privacy in their own home and codifies penalties for violating privacy. Due to the effects of our amendments, passing this will reduce right strength. Is that a good thing or a bad thing to do? Still 54. Okay. Break the deadlock. Uh, routine disrupted. As a chill water, winter wind howled around him, funneling through the streets of Koshu, Mirai pulled his coat closer around him and sighed. He watched his steaming breath, dissipating the wind before the sound of a car engine alerted him to the arrival of his contact. A big dot soon pulled into view. Oh, God. I heard this before, so if you're into this, please go ahead. Um, this fire. <coughs> Jingi threw the thick sheet of newspaper down on the table with a th soft thwap. Quan looked up from his book, startled, looking up at his Jingji from the behind thick glasses. Quan swung off his feet at the table before he could speak. Jingji was already starting on a tirade, a slur of words slamming into another. Whoa, whoa, slow, slow down, what? Quan interrupted, leaning over the table to get a look at the paper. The corporations are backing down, the younger man stabbed a finger to the body of the text. His ambassadors are ceding power to the civilian government to better serve the interests of the people of Guangdong. He looked at Quan with te white teeth gleaming, all the agitating, all of her work is finally paying off. Quan exhaled a cloud of smoke, stabbing out a cigarette in a crowded ashtray. As he stuck another into his mouth, he mumbled, not much to celebrate, still Japanese running the city. Quan flicked his lighter, the little flame burning away paper and tobacco, the same freedom. Jingji scowled. Quan always had to be the cynic, the pessimist. Yesterday we were Zaibatsu puppets, today we're not. You don't see that as a positive change? Quan sucked in a lungful of smoke. Nope, he said. The voice contracted and raspy. Blowing out a white cloud, he continued. Go have your little party, but we have a long way to go. You think too small, Jingji. I'll raise a glass when the last Japanese port leaves for good. Small victories are empty appeasement, so. More costs. Every state gets more Chinese institution support. Decreases radicalism and level corruption by 4%. Uh, Sony will get less sway over us. Uh, decreases the strength. And decreases inflation, but decreases growth. More support and decreases radicalism. Uh, highly decreases security. Cool. So now how many seats do we have? 50, we still have 51. That's pretty good. So what do we have here? Forcing a compromise. Negotiations demand deal making in the heart of the business. Why should these disturbances be any different? Find Morita's role. His words will carry their way with those who can be reasoned with, but can Masashita trust him? Not just a facade. In a circumstance, we must make at least a step towards concessions. Even hurts us politically. <coughs> Here are the moderates. Even within the, the riders, there are meaningful differences. Those who want a better life and those who want to burn everything to the ground. Unite against extremists and let the agents of anarchy burn themselves out. Everything to keep the peace. Sound and sweeten the deal. Huh. Or we could do one final push. We, oh. We passed it. Did we not pass it? Oh, we didn't pass it. Oh, so we can't do that one. Earning Komai support. Loosen the Kenpai Tai's leash. Take out the ringleaders. Subdue the headless chicken. Route them to the last man. That's kind of cool. <coughs> Maybe walking a fine line. There are easy ways out. Solutions provided from courtiers. Seeking honors in return, but Matsushi walked his own path to come hell or high water. There's no better option. On one side, we have the people of the Guangdong aching for reforms and improvements for their lives and working conditions. And on the other, the Legislative Council and their interest of making Guangdong the shiny pearl that it deserves to be, while they care for the well-being of others. If we appease one faction, the other will cry on defiance, and terrible consequences may fall befall a precious state. For the sake of everyone involved, of course, the government and Matsushi will walk a fine line between the two, like towing through a tightrope. It is to our knowledge that this will be a very challenging and thankless task, one that Matsushita must carry out nevertheless for the sake of stability and peace. No wrong steps must be taken or everything may come tumbling down. Rigidity. Oh boy. Samoko was still finding his nostrils by the time the street had finally cleared. The rally scattered and protesters were arrested by the dozen. A sergeant daintily stepped over the crushed picket signs and spent tear gas grenades that littered the ground as he stared at the clipboard. 35 men, 12 women, larger than his precinct was used to, something his subordinates were quickly to remind him of. Sir, what were we supposed to do with them? The stocky young man in short sleeves gestured to the line of men and women, all handcuffed kneeling on the ground, same had bruises and a black eye or two, and all thoroughly cowed for their part in swirling up trouble. Warily, the surgeon bit at a cigarette before angrily stabbing it out beneath his heel. Just round him up and bring him in. Why haven't we already? The surgeon growled. We have no room, the young cadet insisted, gesturing at the two of the two police vans at the end of the streets, both with enough room for eight, maybe nine or ten. The sergeant knew and could not have cared less. The riots were only getting worse, and he needed every man on call to keep the protesters on their toes. Bring him in, the sergeant repeated. The cadet seemed concerned, but sir, the sergeant then shouted, bring them in. Pack them together, stack them like cork, uh, cord would if he had to, bring, but bring him in. The protesters' eyes lit up like neon signs as the policemen pulled them up by the elbows. So it was only a 20-minute drive to the precinct, and it wasn't as if they were going to suffocate on the way, or at least that's what the surgeon told himself as he cruelly kicked the empty grenade canisters at the protesters ooh, that were rounded up and stuffed into the back of a police van, like shipments to a factory. We're going to be for a while. Hey, advance it. Advancements, hey, that stain's finally gone. Great. 
So remember the crisis, we have control of the situation. Um, let's see. More government despair is good. Government control. Yes. Or some after nightfall. Decrease Japanese frustration. Not bad either. Decrease radicalism. Uh. What else we got around here? 22. No corruption? That's what I thought. Hesitation. It's not working at all. Darn it, Matsushita cursed. Oh, look at that. Oh, I've heard about this. I got it. Hand clenched in frustration atop the table at which he sat. Those ingrates <clears throat> aren't giving up either. After all I've done for them, they aren't leaving the streets and getting it, letting us get back to business. Uh, he paused for a moment and withdrew in a deep breath to calm himself, of course, before exhaling. The reason I summon you both, Marita and Ibuka, we need a new strategy, and we need it now. If either of you have any bright ideas, then share them. Marita was the faster of the two. Why don't I suggest that you take a more direct approach? <clears throat> Masto's sheet is brow furrowed. Uh, <clears throat> in confusion, and Marita continued to hurry. Well, I agree that we could stand to be more grateful he chose his words carefully, so we could play dumb if Masashita chose to take offense. I've always found that men are easier to trust face face. Your efforts to earn their trust through reform are admirable, but I must recommend meeting with their leaders directly. Hmm. Reluctant through Masashita was to admit, Marita did have a point, Ibuka. Marita doesn't know what he's talking about, and I'd say that please agree with me on this. Ibuka's biting comments, made with a bored expression, earned him an amused smile from Marita and a slight approving nod from the police guard in the meeting. Continue your current reforms to pull those who can be reasoned with away and conduct harsher crackdowns on those riders and anarchists who remain. This too made sense to Matsushita on a very basic level, divide and conquer. Both men look expectantly at Matsushita, and they would have their answer soon. We're so close with this one. Uh, what do we have here? An ear to the streets. Ooh, that's not good. Whispers from Home Islands. The concerns of the Legislative Council. Strength and stability. We have the resolve, we have the tools, all we need is more time. Fujitsu's Ibuka Maso will gain more sway. Respite and reconciliation. Some of the dissidents can be reasoned with. The challenge is not looking weak in the process. Uh, we'll get more sway. We're going with this guy a lot. We actually look less than just sway, so it's probably better to do this way. Staying on top. An ear to the streets. Since the beginning of the affair, the people on the streets keep shouting demands and requests of improved working conditions and other things which, if we follow through, will cause a profitability to tank. And so far, our efforts to contain them haven't concerned uh, anything about what they have been asking. The continued act of rioting is a grave threat to our stability yet, so to carry out the task of pacifying the streets, and perhaps it's time we change that. This time we'll take notes of what they ask for in their daily rights, and for once, listen to their shouts and screams. We may fall right in our hands if we play the cards right, perhaps we may fulfill some of their demands and wishes. Within reason, of course, in order to temporarily pacify the situation before a more permanent solution can be found. We do have to drive carefully so as to not anger the Legislative Council, and once, once again, walk the fine line between the two. Rubble brewing. Matsushita let the phone ring three times before picking it up finally. He knew who it was. What is it, Mar Marita? I know you don't want my advice, but you need to listen. Marita's voice was steady, but empathetic. My contacts among the Zujin have told me that the mood in the community is getting more and more heated. They think you're out and out, an out-of-touch elitist who doesn't care for them at all. I mean, they're just saying it even, even more than before. Excuse me. Masashita grimaced. But let, let the jab go. If you don't do something, pass some sort of reform to show that you care about the situation, these riots are going to get a lot worse. And what would you suggest? Open things up. Relax some of the restrictions on government positions and allow for more local businesses to compete with the conglomerates. Nothing too radical, just enough to keep them from further radicalizing. Lots of shoot his jaw at time. If he did that, it would be upsetting the very status quo that he'd come into office for promising to protect. But it might be the only way to solve his situation and save Guangdong and himself from complete ruin. Thank you. I'll take it into consideration, but a tense meeting. And the Guangdong Police Force's offices. A poor was being relayed by a nervous police sergeant, sat former a number of other uh, men, lower and higher ranking officers of the GF GPF. They watched in silence as he delivered his report. Ranging from the organization to disrupt the protests and street marches to individual acts of terrorism and sabotage, the crimes of the CCL are well documented and widely accepted. Prosecuting members of the CCL should be easy enough, and so far we've managed to come down hard on a few minor lackeys of the group, he said. The police sergeant stopped for a moment where the response his next sense could produce. The main issue in suppressing the CCL lies in prosecuting anyone of note. Occasionally, a young worker dragged from a protest is not enough to curtail the activities of the leadership, which directs the CCL anonymously and often with no clear links to the rank and file. The senior commissioner nodded slowly, staring intently at the board being used to document the movement of the CCL. Normally a very composed and astute man, the seriousness of the recent protests had got to him. The superintendent general watched over him, having been pressured by the Guangdong government to seek a clear, a quick resolution of the recent issues. After a while, the senior commissioner spoke. We need a way to identify the leadership, and that's going to require some serious investigation. We can't rely on normal police suppression. The senior commissioner sighed and began rolling a cigarette. It seems to me that we've only one or two options. We can either try to pull some information from the street protests directly, or investigate organizations associated with the CCL. Given how things are going, the men we have available, I think the best thing for us to do would be head down the street protests and pick up some brains. Or pick some brains. Investigate the organization that might be covering up the CCL's works. 
Street organization. Let's do that one. Because now we're going to try to dismantle them, not even negotiate. We could negotiate with them, but they probably won't accept whatever we're thinking of. The ticking of the clock, even though we did whispers from the home islands as well. Um, Guangdong is nothing without our benefactors in Tokyo backing us up. They are the ones that first made us as profitable and rich. Without the guidance of Tokyo, our streets may have already fallen anarchy, and Guangdong will fall shortly after. In accordance with this, every action we must take ha ha must have the interests of our benefactors in Tokyo in mind. The Japanese government at this very moment is already expecting us to bring back order to the streets without delay. If we're to fail to bring the situation under control rapidly, they will not may not be hesitant to intervene more directly, which we do not want to happen. With the situation showing no signs of calming down at the moment, the truth may come true if we are not careful. Thus, it's in our best interest that we act fast to defuse the situation before it gets worse and before Tokyo intervenes. The concern is the Legislative Council. Well, the Legislative Council, even in times like these, is filled with talks and bickering about profit margins and economic statistics, accompanied with a new feeling of, of crippling uncertainty. Unsurprisingly enough, these concerns are also those that filled Matsushita's mind. Perhaps it's time for Matsushita to deal with the Legislative Council. After all, the point of towing the line, middle line is to appease both parties in the negotiations and making sure that both of them are pleased in order to contain the situation. To show the Legislative Council that we are still willing, willing to quell the riots if necessary, we'll start to somewhat clamp down into the riots. So saying tough action against them will earn us the support of the Legislative Council, but we must be careful not to anger the rioters too much, lest our efforts to fail and the situation just sends into anarchy. The click ticking of the clock. The talking with General Nagano was never pleasant, even under the best of circumstances, and those are far from the best of circumstances. The head of Guangdong's IJA garrison never came with good news. The first words he said after bursting unannounced into Matsushita's private office were, They're not happy. Matsushita looked up from his paperwork, sighing, and asked, Who's not happy? Tokyo, they think you let the situation get out of hand. Matsushita gritted his teeth. Really? And just what do they plan to do about that? Nagano's face was impassive. Nothing. For now. The silence filled the room. They both knew what Nagano meant. It had been no secret for a long time. They didn't believe that a bunch of weak old corporate bureaucrats were fit to govern, and these rides had only given them even more. A proof of a firmer military hand was needed. Matsushita composed himself. Well, if that's the case, then I appreciate it if you let me get back to my work. And please reassure Tokyo that the situation here is temporary and already being dealt with. <clears throat> Nagano nodded. Of course, I just figured you would want to know and make sure your hands handle this properly. He didn't need to add it implied, or I will. As he left, Matsushita sat. Stewing. All he could do was hope that his efforts would bear fruit and this grass would be resolved quickly. Or everything he built would come tumbling, 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 tumbling down. Lead by example. On section chief, Sudo had sent the rest of the floor a home for the day to, to the general relief. The amount of work for the business planning division already stayed the same, even as Guangdong tore itself to pieces daily, and nobody would leave until Sudo set the example. They all scattered into the streets before sundown, leaving Sudo with a mountain of paperwork to finish him in a phone call to make. He took a longer drag on a cigarette than usual, turning the dial on his phone in a slow, deliberate fashion, drawing up a process for as long as he could until he heard the electric click that opened his connection to Tokyo. Division Chief Tsukamoto, we're not going to make the production targets again, Sudo said, hoping a clean cut would hurt the least. I'm sorry. The ensuing storm of recriminations. Recriminations and assaults were so loud, Sudo could hear it even if he put the phone receivers in arm's length away. Yes, the delays are as bad as ever reported. Machines break every two hours, and the player may take another three to arrive. Sudo tapped his cigarette's ash into overflowing ashtray as he rattled through his pre-prepared explanations, fighting down a bubbling pool of anger in his stomach. We just can't get new people. Half the city's on strike or riding. More shouting. Accusations that Sudo was ignoring the obvious that he was underperforming. That normalcy would have to be restored. Sudo didn't hear much of what Tsu Tsukamoto said after that before realizing he was streaming over him. Of course it's not normal. Nothing about no Guangdong is normal. You'd understand if you spent even a minute in this place. Not that you ever will. Leading from the back. Of course. Investigating the committee while the GPF. Oh, GFT operated in the open. The CCL remains hidden in the shadows, maintaining it, its facades, a community group assisting downtrodden workers and the unemployed while foments dissidents through the ongoing riots. <clears throat> while we have barely any knowledge of the CCL's leadership other than it exists, the coordinated nature of these attacks signify a hierarchy within the committee's rank, connecting those on the top to the lower members doing this dirty work. And through them, we can begin to hunt for clues. By order of the commissioner, the Guangdong Police Force has begun to investigate any known sympathizers to the committee, as well as any other overlooked associations that have cooperated with the CCL. Our officers will prioritize the detention of anyone with close ties to the organization, which should allow us to gather a great amount of intelligence without wasting much of our resources. However, given the priority order to investigate the links, we will not have sufficient units to prevent the riots from worsening. Now, however, we must choose what leads to pursue. The nexuses of community organizations within Guangdong are the ties that lead to the Republic of China. Local communities, of course. We lost a little bit of strength here, eh? Up during the overlooked, we have a report that we have successfully compiled a list of every known community association and group currently operating in the city of Guangdong. Gathering the information proved to be quite easy, as many of these associations were found on either ethnic, rural, family, clan, or home city ties, its members maintaining contact even as they were displaced across the Three Pearls. Due to the lack of political emphasis in these groups, they were mostly overlooked by our anti-insurgency operations throughout the decade, and we'll rectify that. 
But starting now, the GPF will proceed with undertaking infiltration missions to gather intelligence from within these groups. We shall find a re report our findings once we make a breakthrough. Proceed. The outcome of our actions will negatively impact the future investigation. Well, that's not good. A rather unfriendly community. <coughs> our recent operations of infiltrating the uh, local community groups have proven to be more difficult than initially expected. While some of our plainclothes officers managed to successfully apply for membership into these organizations, of course. The acquisition of any solid evidence has been challenging at best to practically impossible due to the extreme measures applied by these groups to police their own members. Challenge questions and passwords are among the obstructions of our agents had to face, resulting in few of them having a loss of cover and being forced to exfiltrate empty-handed. Besides the notable increase of the funding towards these communities, coinciding with the growing forces of the CCL, we cannot strike coincidence with concrete proof. Despite several more attempts of hunting for hard data linking both of these groups, the self-policing of the members, and the lack of any tangible high command within the organizations leave us with no lead to follow and with little gains made with each new mission. We regret to inform you that we will need more time and more resources to further investigate these communities until we can find a lead to work with or report any further developments should they come. We've got the resources for now, but we could do this one, but since we, like I said earlier, um, uh, reduce his sway, we're going to go with this one, despite reconciliation. Morita Kale has a plan to deal with this consuming chaos on the streets. It's plans to negotiate with the different uh, descending factions within the riots and to work out a deal with them to put an end to the anarchy in the streets. Matsushita has deemed that Morita's plan is the most feasible one that we have in store and to bring an end to the violence peacefully, without the police having to lift a finger. Understandably, however, the other executives and members of the Legislative Council are not on the same page with Matsushita and Morita, and the plan is very unpopular among them. Facing no other option, of course, Morita's plan will be carried out and he will open negotiations with the rioters, hopefully reconcile to put an end to the riots, but Matsushita must be careful for how much he's willing to offer to the rioters, as one concession too many can make cost them all of the support of the Legislative Council, and of course, the other executives. Well, of course, Ibuka smiled over his tea. Honestly, Masaharu, there's really no need to worry. Well, Tashida looked up from the tea that sat untouched in front of him. You really think so? Of course, these troublemakers will burn themselves out soon enough. Noticing Masashida's skeptical look, he added, Don't look so unsure. It gives credence to a certain rumors. Masashida set up what rumors? Rumors going around, some that you plan to make a deal with these radicals. I don't believe a word of it, of course, but maybe you should reach out to reassure certain members of your commitment to the current course. Masashida nodded. You're certain we'll get through this one uh, get through this in one piece? Yeah, just keep the ship steady in this normal pass. Masashida nodded again, knowing the wisdom and political expediency of Ubuka's words, but his mind drifted to Masashida's electric's most recently quarter report. Extreme decline of profits, unlikely to change until the situation is resolved. He breathed deeply, we must hope the storm passes soon. They're furious, and they're deserving us, so. An unfriendly or lack of faith. The recent bombing of the Imperial Trade Bureau in Hong Kong was an unfortunate consequence of the investigation's sluggish pace, which has resulted in not only the death of several key functionaries and civilians, but also the receipt of a grave communique from the commanders of the local Japanese garrison, who have grown doubtful in our discreet approach to dismantling and dealing the CCL. They believe that our campaign has already proven fruitless, and have gone to suggest we substitute for a stronger, harsher response against the looming threat. While it's not in our position to question the authority of the Imperial Army, we do, however, wish to report that we may be on the brink of a breakthrough in our intelligence gathering, and should you grant us your approval and continue the ongoing infiltration assignment, we simply require a little more time in order to properly organize the data on these groups. Strong approach? Continue the mission. Staying on top. Throughout the entire affair, everyone around uh, Masashida, from those he trusts to those that he does not, has been exploiting the chaos within the government and the Legislative Council that the rights of Rex sold away power from them. Uh, for fortunately, though, this has been brought to Matsushita's attention, and he can take the necessary actions to prevent such an event from taking place. Matsushita <clears throat> will keep a very watchful eye on anyone who is still willing to do such an action of defiance, while simultaneously having their other eye on the street to monitor the situation so it doesn't get out of hand. We're at the end of the line, and it is in these crucial moments that the future of Guangdong takes shape. There must be no loose ends. Of course. Uh, tenuous. Internal use do not circulate as of present in the state of Guangdong. Has entered a city chaos unheard of since immediate period following the war of liberation. Entire sectors of major urban centers appear to have come under the sway of dissident groups. While the occupied zones cannot be evenly split between politically oriented terrorists and criminal elements, both organized and disorganized, momentum appears to lie in the hands of the illicit Chinese labor organizations. The disturbances have been less severe in rural areas, which is believed to be the result of poor communications infrastructure and a sparse or decreasing population. Despite uh, these pressing concerns, the actions of the chief executive do not appear to match the severity of the situation. Despite the obvious economic and social detachment caused by the continued inaction, and thus the legitimacy of the Guangdong itself, they are so far proving unable or unwilling to resolve the situation correctly. Domestic security personnel. With assistance from the Camp Atai, while currently being able to contain the significant spread of urban violence, have thus far proven inadequate to breaching neutralized centers of unrest. Heavier assistance is, of course, requested. Communications with the Tokyo and the IJ High Command have thus far proven sporadic. While agreeing with local command on the severity of the situation, they continue to vest powers of suppression within Guangdong civilian institutions. Another protest has been issued, but present orders remain to observe and await further instructions. The Imperial 23rd Army Department of Communications. What is this? Corruption. Oh, we're good. 
Grant minor CCO concessions. Oh man, are we actually going to lose a seat for this? Increase government spirit. Conduct pro CCL inspections. Pro pro huh? Assure investors of crackdowns. Decreases fears and despair. It's not bad. We've been negotiating with the riders in the hopes of finding a peaceful solution that will not disrupt your businesses. We see now that such a solution is impossible. We're taking appropriate actions to arrest our leaders and these riots. Product cycle? Oh crap. Uh, the pattern shaping. <clears throat> After extensive investigation and data gathering by our agents, we were able to properly identify several key figures within the hierarchy of these community groups, mainly lieutenants and organizational commissars that are considered instrumental to their plots. Furthermore, we were able to construct a sizable map pinpointing multiple caches owned by these groups. For the stash of money, weapons, propaganda, and other supplies across the three pearls, finally we made a breakthrough. However, this evidence alone is not enough to uh, solidify a link between the community groups and the CCL, of course, which requires us to continue the investigation until that link can be properly established. We have two operations on standby, waiting for approval. We can wiretap the communications and examine the transcripts for suspicious exchanges, or we can send officers to tail after the merchandise being held by these groups. Once we receive your orders, of course, the operation will begin immediately, and we'll begin to report once we made our findings. Um, all the goods. Now we're going to do the color TV, of course. 40-40. Um, we don't have a lot of political power, but we'll still do it. So try to. And we lose 35 more political power. That's not great. Bang for buck. Um, we have 12 examples of uh, procured and delivered by clandestine affairs personnel from the preparatory CCL armories. Overview: the explosive potential of the Committee of Chinese Labor is growing at an alarming pace. Our previous estimations suggest CCL use of improvised explosive devices as confined to sporadic use and prone to malfunction or premature detonation. This assumption is no longer tenable. While clearly constructed in non special facilities, these devices bear a level of sophistication and payload comparable to paramilitary organizations such as the Northeastern Anti Japanese United Army. Please view the attached documents for further technical information. It is believed that these figures, with an advanced knowledge of munitions, may be assisting urban insurgents. Conclusions The potential consequences of the explosive stockpiles currently in possession of the CCL, as identified by embedded Operation Sulfate operatives, being used in further attacks cannot be understated or allowed. Special Branch Command is recommended to seriously consider the benefits of continued proximity to CCL leadership against the cost of leaving stockpiles in place. Addendum. Consul General Takashima strongly recommends swift intervention. Took his little patience for a dithering or failure. Kick in the door. Well, they have leaders. Let's, let's just make more. Hmm. Strong location. We can try to storm it. Nice. Happy June, everybody. Happy June. Alright. A banger or a whipper. Uh, identify stockpiles of CCL armaments, explosives, and whatnot. Um, operational outcomes. Sites of IED manufacturing storage found by embedded agents and delivered to forensic personnel. Greater insight into tactical material capacities of the CCL gained. The weapon stockpiles rated in large quantities of enemy material recovered and destroyed. Several believed mid operative senior figures of the CCL leadership in custody, interrogations ongoing. Overall outcome, success. Addendum, it's unknown if the whole or majority of CCL explosives have been recovered. If large supplies remain, likely to their use in reprisal tax is high. Security forces are recommended to be placed on appropriate alert. Keep an eye on cross your fingers. We see one of the required clues needed before we construct the CCL. If the government controls the underworld, we need two clues to proceed, also we need three. We need to revise our options to gather clues. Cool. Strength must be in the Opening dialogue. Monster Shida shifted uncomfortably. As they stared down the representative of the GP, uh, GFT, the meeting had not been open to the best of notes, while Master Shida nearing, shouting at them when he received their initial demands, which in his view amounted to completely undercutting the competitiveness of Guangdong's economy in the name of protecting Zhu Jin's own small businesses from Japanese and foreign competition. After his own hostility after these proposals became clear to them, the GFT representatives became more hostile and kind, refusing to budge and insisting that their demands were reasonable steps to protect the Zuzhin middle class from going completely underwater during the current global crisis. Ascension lasted throughout the discussion, which each side testing the other's resolve, ultimately neither budged much, but neither walked out either. And when Matsushita stood out to see the GFT representatives, both sides agreed that despite their obvious disagreements, a further talk should begin to hammer out a mutually acceptable compromise. Matsushita slumped back in his chair when the man had left and wiped his forehead. It was tense, but he held firm, and it seemed like he was following the path of to some sort of resolution to all this. It's a start, if nothing else, of course. A tense meeting. In the Guangdong's police forces offices, a report was being relayed by a nervous police sergeant. Sat before were a number of other men, lower and higher ranking members of the GP GPF. They watched in silence as he delivered his report. Ranging from the uh, organization of disruptive protests and street marches to individual acts of terrorism and sabotage. Uh, oh, I read this one before earlier. So. so head down to the streets and protest and pick up some, pick some brains. Cool.
Two percent, huh? How is it they're increasing? They can do the streets. Don't you forget about me? Homeless. Oh, we're gonna buy this. Please right ahead. So they must miss miss a spot looking for those bombs. The action failed because CCL's radicalism is about forty percent. Oh boy. Taking it to the streets. And who's that Japanese? Uh, so right, where is it at? Eight point two percent. Uh, we could probably do this one once. Come down here, and then we'll do what? How much support do we have? 90? 90? That much. Well. Take it to the streets. <laughs> the Boulevard bustle was protested as they jostled back and forth, occasionally tossing bricks or other missiles from the crowd. As far as the end of the Boulevard, a police barricade had been set up. The crowd. Bounced against the riot uh, police's wall of shields and occasionally trunch them bounced against their heads. Seems like this had been coming going down for some time now, but with the recent decision to escalate the police presence, they had taken a significant turn. As we have a protest to search for, a cry rang out from the ranks of the police. The first line of, line of police, riot police, broke rank and ran forward, beating the agitators and forcing them back. The protesters began to flee down the boulevard into the side streets. Some stood to the ground and were beaten and arrested, while others couldn't make it away in time and were likely pounced on. All of these unlucky individuals were promptly loaded into waiting wagons and driven away. These captives oh, would soon find themselves driven outside of the main cities and herded into makeshift detention centers. Hastily assembled, these institutions were cobbled together from mobile offices and quickly erected fire wire fences. When not serving time in any official capacity, the detention centers have proven to be a quick temporary remedy for the problem of the CCL. They were not, however, doing anything to ease attentions with the Chinese workers and the Guangdong police force were well aware of this. Back at the Guangdong police force, the senior commissioner was left with a choice. The escalation of the protest crackdown was his ideal, and was acutely aware of the escalating situation. There needed to be some movement in terms of actually cracking down on the CCL. Two options were presented to him. They could either begin interrogations immediately, or observe the prisoners until they form a hierarchy and pick out the leaders from this. Both were risky, but the first step in the benefit of potentially reducing quicker, theoretically less reliable results. The time was of the essence, though, and so his option was attractive. The second was perhaps likely to allow them more qu to quickly identify the leadership, though some doubt the CCL was that straightforwardly hierarchical. Do I get for questioning immediately? Well, we can try to drag him out. Eating an iron bush. The hope behind the order to immediately interrogate the recently processed prisoners was that most of these so-called activists of the CCO were merely abandoned, organized rabble rousers and dissidents. After a few hours of straight, strict questioning, they would be broken and spilling their secrets before the shifts end. How, how really, or reality delights in crushing the expectations of hope. The indiscriminate approach to interrogating the prisoners has proven fruitless. No matter whom the officers shout or attempt to persuade with physical beatdowns, none so far have yet to been part with their knowledge easily, if at all. It appears the CCL has been radicalized to such an extent that their organizational structure appears quite disciplined, forcing the commissioners to suspend any further investigations and observe among the detailed detained ones that appear to be calling the shots. Targeting the ringleaders would prove to be the next best course of action. That being said, the precious time wasted in the questioning these activists had led, led to quite the wave of irritation being expressed by both the Guangdong administration. And our superiors from Tokyo. It'd be pretty not to further uh, the either's eye. Time to play final leader. Well, that sucks. Uh, the game's gonna like super hard, but you know whatever. Uh, we're still doing okay here. You know, whatever. Um, as you can see, you see it from the, the the wards here. I am reloading the game save again, but whatever. Um, what is this? Increase strength. Increase radicalism. Slinging, slinging out the big fish. While this waiting game is far from being an ideal solution to a crisis such as this, the tight-knit organization, the CCL, proves that there is a command hierarchy pulling all the strings. Such a hierarchy will doubtlessly show itself among the prisoners, so with the creative use of a spacious room to serve as a holding cell, a one-way window for observing officers, and a coffee machine to maintain astute vigilance, the authorities stand by and watch for the first sign of leadership among the detained. With some time, the patients will be rewarded eventually. The prisoners break beginning crack and seek out their authority figures for guidance. One among them seems to stand out the most. Xiu Xing, Liu Xing, ex-captain of the Kong Meng Tang, veteran of the number of battles against the Imperial Army, and also manager of the Yellow Dragon Association, which leads to a lends aid to migrating Chinese. With the ringleaders singled out, all that's left now is to send the rebel back to the cells and begin the interrogations thoroughly, first with Captain Singh. Let us uh, proceed. <coughs> and uh, this would be better to do, uh, but I don't want to do, increase the frustration. The future at stake. Interrogation of Captain Liu has proven to be ineffective. Offers of immunity were quickly or staunchly rebuffed, and any attempts of physical coercion was met with a great resistance by the prisoner. Well, it was stated that he has suffered much greater agonies at the hands of the Japanese Hunden. Interrogators have also reported that the prisoner stated his attention to reveal not one piece of information, claiming he would rather join his brothers in the dirt than be betrayed the future Guangdong and rising China. The link between his activities and the mention of the Republic of China can only mean that he may have been trained by their intelligence services, and thus more stronger methods will be required. 
The report suggests that perhaps Kempa Test Services would be ideal in breaking down the prisoners' resistance to questioning. Given the chaotic situation on the ground, it's certain that they will implement excruciating methods of torture to require the information as quickly as possible, regardless of the prisoners' life is at risk. However, there's no alternative. Through our access to the civilian registry, we can track down any individual who is remotely related to the prisoner, be it his children, family, spouse, or even his entire association. Certainly one among them would like he would want to see if spared from the consequences of his crimes. The commissioner awaits instruction on how we should proceed. Tragedy? Make the prisoner crack, of course. Trying to make this as profitable for us as we possibly can. Oh crap, and also we have the product left cycle, cycle too. Which honestly, it's not bad for where we're at. By moonlight. It was a strange to see the factory like this. Um, and the, nat the darkness of the night of the building, normally full of light and sound and sweat, seemed to loom unnaturally over the cityscape around it. The moonlight stretching its shadow over the streets to the building opposite. Four men in black used, used that shadow for covers they made the padlocked, uh, made for the padlocked factory gate. Slipping up to the gate, one of the men used a pair of bolt cutters to break the lock, carefully as, as to make a little, as little noise as possible. Once inside the gate, the men split up without saying a word. The plan had been intensely rehearsed, and they each knew the factory inside and out. From outside of the factory, it's hard to tell. <clears throat> At first, what was going on, an orange glow came from some of the windows, and at first it seemed like someone had turned on the lights inside. It was only when the black smoke came pouring out that the truth became obvious. It took the fire crews hours to snuff the blaze, by which point the factory had been completely gutted and several nearby buildings had been badly damaged. Four men were nowhere to be found. They had slipped back into the night. Sins of the father and husband. We've investigated the captain's background and discovered that the man has a wife and son. Both suspected of showing sympathetic sentiments to the CCL cause, and are directly involving with the ongoing riots. While the domicile is located, we quickly dispatch officers to apprehend the two and bring them into an adjacent room to the interrogation chamber. They demonstrate to the prisoner that our threat is far from a mere bluff, as expected. The shock upon Captain's visage means that now we have our leverage. Interrogators have assumed or assured the prisoner that this family would not be questioned by our men, but they would be given to the camp by Ty if he further attempted to withstand or withhold the truth. It didn't take long for the captain to finally relent, and we're currently jotting down all important information gathered from this breakthrough. As for the son and wife, they will remain in custody until the crisis is resolved, but we made a compromise in that they may share the same cells per the captain's requests. Even the strongest men have their weaknesses. Boy, ain't that true. Alright. Um once I've had in a conference room at the Guangdong Police Agency. The brass concerned with the recent riots had gathered a report on the findings of the interrogations. Spirits were generally high, the uncharacteristically nervous disposition of the senior commissioner had vanished, and his stern and confident demeanor returned. The superintendent general was also feeling happier, though he didn't show this outwardly. There was work to be done. A superintendent in charge of one of the detention centers was given a summary of his findings. The evidence was overwhelming. I'm afraid it's clear to us what's being planned, the superintendent said. It's a major disruption along some of the most important transport hubs in Guangdong, both the three pearls and the regional cities. Be a huge economic blow to the co prosperity sphere for to succeed. The city commissioner nodded, as we're ahead of them for once, and in just in time it seems. I don't speak out of turn, but a disruption of the scale could affect the autonomy of Guangdong itself if the mainland becomes concerned. The superintendent general shot him an accusing glance, but said nothing. The com senior commissioner continued, Assuming the best conditions, we essentially have two ways of acting. We can either set up extra security details outside of major ports and airports, or we can focus on the interrogations. The major concern with the first plan of action is that we run the risk of tipping up the CCL off, but it could be good to prevent a disruption of the scale. Return the interrogations will give us more time, more information to act on. We then mold over their options for a while, and a natural conclusion eventually reveals itself. Increase security. Go ahead and increase it, that's fine. Uh, here. Uh, okay, why not? We have only 64 days left, and, uh,. Well, it's okay. It's tripping her hand. Tipping her hand. Commissioner Okuni Yasu read the latest batch of reports from various precincts of Guangdong. It had been a few days since he was signed off on the increased security around major transport hubs, but and it was hoping that the results would be, mitigate his actions. On the other hand, uh, off, on one hand, officers stationed in the planned target locations have made several arrests of individuals that, after rigorous integrations, have been revealed to have been scouts ca casing the transport hubs in advance of the actual attacks. Even now, the precincts housing those scouts who are still ringing valuable intel from those would be, would be terrorists. <coughs> However, Ken Kuni Yasu has still a gnawing regret. The tax had almost certainly been deterred without any crewing any damages or unnecessary risks, but also this had cost his officers most of the leads they'd gathered so far in the CCL's plans. He didn't like that from the point forward, Guangdong's police would be venturing in unknown territory. At least transfer helps itself. We don't have enough clues due to prior investigations of the Guangdong government control of the regions of Guangdong to surgically strike the CCL. Target them. Me with them. Situation changes. Just the legislative council, huh? Stage two. The government war plans have been hard at work. Seemingly millions of policy meetings, memorandum, internal debates. Later, three distinct groups have coalesced. No, sufficient material had been found to strike against the CCL. Opinions on who to hit first differed. 
Welcome to recommend cutting off the head of the snake, targeting the CCL leadership. It's mostly run of the terrorists rudderless rudder and make them easy pickings for police sweeps. As detractors, though, fear that new leaders will simply appear from the crowds. Another group recommended escalating lockdown measures, curfews, sweeps, and break-ins. The leaders were unable to get together and the protesters were unable to meet. So reasoning went, when the riots turned, uh, would run out of steam on their own accord. Others, however, argued that this would potentially allow the leadership to escape, as well as stretching already a stressed government manpower to an unacceptable extent. The third group, though, emphasized a different target. The Republic of China saw an opportunity to make a decisive intervention of what they still consider part of their homeland. For all this, uh, they thought the government should isolate the Chinese Consul General and keep Nanjing in the dark as to what's really happening in the streets. This will a great effect on how we deal with the CCL for better or for worse. The outcome depend on if China is meddling in the riots. Be more successful. Well, the radicalism is extremely high. It's 100%. I did this one last time when I played Sony Morita, but it didn't go so well for us. It's probably not going to go well for us anyways, but whatever. How much support do we have from these guys, actually? 90%, 90%, so we can still piss them off. Thank you. Come again. Once bustling, now silent. The streets of Guangdong were silent, distinctly silent compared to the usual. All protesters and pedestrians have been cleared away from the main roads, whose only traffic were the Guangdong poli riot police milling around. The occasional large concrete barricades uh, imposed itself over the streets, uh, forcing people to find new routes. A curfew had been imposed across the entire city blocks, and the officers on the streets were very conscious of the timid faces spying at them from the windows of the buildings. In smaller side streets, people still try to gather and protest, but the possibility of large grounds gatherings was severely restricted, and those who could find themselves easily trapped and beaten by the riot police when they went on the offensive. The CCO were naturally alerted to what was happening, as they always were going to be. The thought from the authorities was that the organization and leadership would be in disarray, unable to organize or resist the suppression. It was only the first step, but soon to see, be seen whether the operation would pay off. It only gets worse. It was more efficient because the CCO's, the CCO's radicalism is above 50%, and it will greatly weaken them. Yay! Finally dwindling. Kind of propaganda. Meh. Alright. Then what? <coughs> Lockdown overnight, the city appeared to double its weight in concrete. Traffic came to halt, and work went unfinished, of course. The subway tunnels emptied, and their mouths held under the lock and key, or across the major roads, and the space between the neighborhoods. The roadblocks stood, bases heavy enough to stop vehicles dead, with barbed wire tall enough to repel men afoot, at the very least, assuming they came unarmed, of course. It was not all the case in all locations, nor could all the police hope to be everywhere. Perceived weakness were quickly spotted, and attempts to break through were made. The fence, however, proved less fragile than the thin chain mesh appeared at first, and the concrete was particularly immovable. Commercial power tools began to cut through, but at a pace intolerable to the enraged masses, who many had not been previously party to the riots. And while some posts had been left unmanned, none had been left unobserved. As soon as they appeared, the drills and cutters were soon abandoned, those wielding them were sent away or cut down. Siren uh, patrols sped through their assigned areas, making observations as they went. The cells were rusted, exposed, the cages locked tight. All that remained was to determine exactly where, in the vast concrete landscape of urban Guangdong, the heads of the snake lay and uh, buried them to co the concrete swallow them whole, tighter, tighter. What is this one next? Battle of the Junction. The pain course the officer Chun Jaws uh, as he slumped against a squad car, gingerly pressing an ice back to the fractured portion of its face. He kept his eyes shut, but the morning light bled uh, into the skull at all the same. He thought his thoughts were a combination of inarticulate profanity and animal responses to the pain and sounds beside him. Crashing, bludgeoning, and the soft hit of exploding Zedan of cocktails, shouting in various proficiencies of Ch Cantonese. Who was winning, Xun couldn't say. And then the noise calmed down. Bellowing Cantonese commands from his fellow officers were re replaced with indoor voice Japanese and radio crackles. Guess we won after all, Xun thought. Then again, he had no idea how well the uh, fight went in the first place. He'd been knocked out of commission almost as soon as they arrived. <coughs> He wondered if this meant there'd be any chance of proper medical attention soon, just as every ga ga uh, gazai with a paper cut was seen to, of course. He noticed some grunts of effort and the dragging of his feet besides him. There was a water spit slash against his splashing against his forehead. Run hell, stupid traitor, came the voice, before a grunt of pain came from the same voice. He was presumably shoved in a transport vehicle afterwards, but Sion's eyes remained shut. Screw you too, buddy, he thought, pouring another jewel to pinch, took a salt from his body momentarily. His mind reawoke to Officer Leung, kneeling next to him, the only other Chinese in the squad. How's your head? he asked. Sion only grunted in response. Nasty work back there, but Control says we got some of the worst of it. It's calm most places. Good for you to be out of commission for the next couple of days since you thro they're throwing us into the dens. We're on a bus until everyone's calm. Cool. <coughs> Almost there, and losing control. Oh boy. Oh, that's not good. Nami Imura was known by many names. Nami to her mother and her friends, Officer Imura to her officer and colleagues. Honey to that condescending piece of crap Hidetaka from the forensics, but to most she was controller dispatch. 
The radio set bleeped again as if on cue. Control, this is LC-049. Negative signs alive at location B-37E on route to location over. Acknowledge LC-049, crossing it off the list. Control out. Her pen hovered over the infuriatingly tiny lettering of the spreadsheet before finding the correct box. After checking twice to make sure she had eyeballed it wrong, another place was ticked off, just as Sisyphus finishes daily rounds up the hill. Now, I'm much like everyone else in the dispatch, I've been working overtime for the past week. This was still in order to be co close to full, and orders was only for the squad cars assigned to her specifically. The brass had come down, they wanted a methodical operation, and they promptly screwed off, ba screwed off back upstairs. Meanwhile, she could barely stand up to refill her cup with the industrial strength paint thinner that they call coffee between calls. Apparently, the corpos and the Ledco were whining to high heaven about the delays of all this cause, but here Nami was, close to passing out, still on the line. Speak of the devil. Control this is AY441, location B77U, successfully cleared. Requesting two meat wagons for cleanup over. Copy the AY441, relaying to meat wagon crews. ETA unknown at the time, hang tied over. A confirmatory bark came over the line, the connection cutting shortly after Nami filled the sheets in again. And turned around and gave it a look at the brood pop. Just a minute or two without the beep. Just give it a bit of time, it'll be awake again for just, just a little. The beep went up again. God darn it. Nice. Don't worry, everyone's frustrated and everyone's having a terrible time. Status quo chaotic. Or status security status. You know, constrict it. Instead of going down, continues to display little. Uh, oh, I've read this one before, I think. So if you wanted this one, please go ahead. The house always wins. Chen and two compatriots sat at a table in a burned out building, idly tossing dice back and forth. Kit sat in the corner for this from the elements, still fiddling with the radio. He picked up nothing but different uh, cadences of static. The dice clattered around and around the bowl, each time coming up with the different numbers. Maybe they meant something, maybe they didn't. Nobody was keeping score, even playing through any real game, same as it ever was. <coughs> In the distance, the great lads of Koshu had sparked a life snuffing out the gentle caress of the moon and making the small lantern they had brought home or brought up sleep. Slogans were littering the wall, and scraps of torn banners, discarded weapons, and general detritus followed to litter the streets, as they did, as they were still here for now. They had to be something right, just a little more push, and things could finally be put right, made better, couldn't they? They were the teeming masses of Guangdong, those whose blood kept the lights flowing in the margins high. The cops, arm, executives, guns, money, you know. She didn't be able to keep up, uh, keep up with that. This absurd fever dream that had been forced to accept as reality couldn't just reassert itself like just like that. The rest couldn't all be gone now, could they? Couldn't all be dead beyond bars given up? The chill at night gave no answer. We could, Chun began before trailing off, seeing the looks on others' faces. He had no idea how he would finish that sentence anyway. In the distance, a sound could be heard. Because we sufficiently weakened the CCL, their dismantlement proceeded smoothly. Nice. There's 38 days left, huh? Nice. We can focus on the economy eventually, too. That'd be kind of nice, too. More paper, huh? Ooh, more political power. Yes, please. Are we maxed out? 100%, 80. Ooh, wow. Oh wow, we actually did way too much, okay. Well, that's good to know. Target locations. Actually, how much does Japan not like us? 84%. Mm, we can do Japan, probably. Profitability is not great anywhere, really. Profitability would go down. Transport would go up, though. Hmm. Well, transport would go down. What do we need to sell to anybody? Hmm. Oh, they can't like this. There you go. There you go. And you know what? 100%, 100%. We love the color TV. Break the budget freeze. Situation changes. Company line. You can hear the Matsushita Electric TV factory before you enter it. The creaking of metal cranes and the winding joint of assembly lines is audible from outside the premises. In our respect, the absence of familiar sounds it was the first sign that something was wrong. As you run in the corner, all Kurobe Atsushiko, Atsuhiko, a rising star of the Matsushita Electric, a factory manager at 38, could hear uh, were the mocking jeers and chants of his workers, none of whom were wearing the coveralls that Matsushita acquired of its employees. <clears throat> They had stated the squ uh, squatter's claim on the pavement outside the factory doors, forming a human barricade despite it being ten minutes from the start of the shift. Uh, Kurobe struggled to muster a coherent response to the site. He hadn't tried to cover up the news of the Hitachi Massacre. That would have been stupid as well as pointless, but he assured the workers that it would be never happened to them. Matsushita wasn't heartless, but it would take, wouldn't take care of anyone for free. That had been the line from the corporate, and if it was good enough for Kurobe, then he thought it would be good enough for everyone else. A shout from the crowd, followed by the throw of a stone slamming into his shoulder, made it clear that Kurobe's assurances had been nowhere near enough. He turned and scurried back around the corner with a roar of the crowd lingering in his ears. Matsushita would take care of him. Right? Smoke over ashes. 
If you close your eyes and listen, sitting in the quiet of the day, it was clear that the riots were over. Guangdong endured many long weeks of blaring police sirens and loud bells, of shouted slogans and unrestrained anger. They had only recently ended, but now they seem so distant, so unreachable. When those discordant sounds disappeared, they were replaced by an uncomfortable, unnatural silence. But whether out of a sense of duty or just because it felt like the right thing to do, the rhythms of life eventually returned to the field of the void, and soon the silence vanished, replaced with rather different sets of sounds. All across the third world, you could hear the harsh, high scraping of posters being removed. The young men uh, worked hard, heaving mounds of rubble and ashes to clear the streets. Their bays and sweat fell in places where blood had once been shed, and of course, the low clunking of factories had returned. A constant metronomic heart that come from the Guangdong was indeed alive again. The riots had left many scars across all society, and it wouldn't be easy to repair what could be fixed. Here, what could be meant, still mended, but slowly, surely, things were settling again, not into the old ways. Something had changed, and a new normal was beginning to emerge. And so, step by step, carefully, Guangdong marched into the future. Through all the tumult and chaos of the Guangdong riots, Monster Shida Masaharu has, carefully, by his own re hand, Re-establish control over Guangdong through skillful handling of the rioters. Through the heavy, the art of heavy hand and compromise, Masashida has solidified his grip over Guangdong, establishing himself as the true heir to Masashida Konosuke's legacy. Ah, oh, look at this guy. A name rightfully earned. And yet the Senate returned to the relative calm after the destruction wrought by the oil crisis. The Guangdong riots, brought about due to mass social anger, that living in a segregated system, had let the last calm down. Tense negotiations with the government and a harsh crackdown have recently yielded a claim or calm on the streets of Guangzhou and other major cities within the corporate democratic state. The chief executive has recently made a community key indicating total success and a vow to return to business one way or another. Tokyo has indicated its congratulations from Nanjing and there, there's no other comments, so I think I'm going to leave, actually leave this, the rest of this for the last episode because we did get to the rights and it's over about an hour and a half into this video, so if you enjoyed the video though, Please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we'll finish off the, the campaign and read about the last focus tree with a successful and name rightfully earned heir. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!